I'm actually a surgeon, but interested in laser PPT for the last uh, since 1985. I know it's a lot of time. Um, and then the area where we are, we are in there, uh, still within the Gauls' own very common county. Uh, and uh, we use an open theater for doing PPT as a surgeon. Um, where we are, the current state, let's have some facts. The fact is that, <coughs> unfortunately, lung cancer is the most common cancer in the world. And these are some of the figures to give you. Important to me is that the five years survival is 10% and has been as long as I can remember, as long as I've been in chest surgery. And rate of resection is now a bit more, but is in average no more than 20%. And the best treatment option is surgery when you can do it. Unfortunately, between 60 to 80% uh, of, of people were um, at presentation or in open. Uh, I showed <coughs> to show that in general it is accepted that the development of lung cancer is gradual and the starting both cellular changes and then reaching gradually to various um, stage of uh, dysplasia to cause the cell side to for from my angle and this afternoon you will hear someone who is by presenting the, the school which is not quite my angle and that is Jeremy George, carcinoma in situ is cancer. And I can't give up on that. I know that Jeremy and uh, the, the colleague are watching that. The, the standard treatment is surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. And this is across the board. And we can't move that. We are trying to, but we can't. But apart from the standard therapy, there are a hell of a lot of other therapy, including they, they, they completely, you know, voodoo and so on. So, <laughs> PDT is one of, you know, don't think that, yeah, PDT is the only. But this is an interesting thing for those people who are interested <coughs> in PDT. That some time back, uh, we reviewed the whole of the literature that we could for PDT for as long as was we could do. And you could see that most of the papers are in the laboratory and in the science, and that TDT, in fact, the number of papers, we didn't take case reports, by the way, we put five cases upwards, 5,769, and of this, cutting it down for the lung cancer, there are 771 papers on 10,000 cases approximately and uh, of one experience and this is published. Um, the next is that just remind everyone that the PDT essentially is a two-step uh, uh, procedure uh, scientifically, laboratory and also clinically. You give the photosensitizer and it's the illumination which determines the reaction you get. And the illumination, as far as the lung cancer concerned, is that either one of the airway, this is what we call central uh, bronchoscopy, or across the chest wall. And these are the two ways that illumination is done. And this is reflecting on this diagram that Practically, um, you have got these are peripheral, and these are the areas that the uh, radiologists and uh, various people put their needles in. I don't like to be your wife, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and here it is. And the central one is this, and this is the area that uh, we, as a as a, in the airway, we reach from Um then there is this uh, to show you that 
98% of PDTs are done by airway at the moment. There is only 2%, which is peripheral. And this is an important issue for the, um, the talk that you will have about a pearl um, uh, uh, trial, which is going to be by the way. Because, but well, we come to that. Anyhow, bronchoscopically, this is done through the bronchoscope, and this is a red diagrammatically shown there. And as far as the uh, peripheral one concerned, either you can do it through the, the via the, these gentleman techniques that they put needles in, or you can do it uh, according to me, that, that is my pen and Calcat there, who we'll come later on, just uh, talking about the thoracoscopy. You can do thoracoscopy and do the same thing. But but you will see that there is a there is a bit of a difference. But then no, the, the Japanese go on for the the, the the needle and we go for thoracoscopy. Uh, so locally advanced, the bronchoscopic local advanced is for uh, advanced cases, locally advanced, no metastasis outside the, the thorax, and these are generally is the interstitial illumination which determines the, the type. And you get a, if you have it, it's published, everybody, there's a lot of publication on that. And essentially there is no mortality, and there is a photosensitivity which is different according to the sort of how careful and how well the unit that you're working is. And the functional, there is an 80% functional improvement. It is important to consider that because 80% of the people are inoperable by the time they come. And I will tell you later on my solution to that. The superficial one is easy. You are doing the illumination by projection. But I also want to mention already that for the superficial one, you must, if you are doing that job, you must do fluorescence uh, bronchoscopy, which for us, autofluorescence is very good, by the way. We don't need enhancement. And if you get a result, of the early ones. Now you can see that this is the early surgery. This is the Japanese one, and this is our own published in the in the thorax. And on average, you more or less get the same depending on the size of the tumor and the extent of the tumor in bronchoscopy. Right, where we go? from here. Now, those are established. We are there. Where we go, there is a, we are at the moment in a, a period of transition. And on this period of transition <coughs> is that we have got a PDT going on for downstaging, PDT in metachronous disease. This is that the people have been operated on or treated. And at, at least five or six years later, they have got another tumor even uh, in this either in the same lung or the other lung. And then we have got rare tumors and we have got the same synchronous tumor. These are all, they are cases, uh, for instance, in the rare tumor, we have published something about, in all, about 20 cases. And these are endobronchial mostly rather than they do in a, in a peripheral. <coughs> These are some examples of that. This is, by the way, uh, <coughs> this is a, a, a Turkish uh, patient. Therefore, you can see here a tumor. It is in the carina, which is the middle of the lower trachea between the two bronchi and also in the right of the lung. And in these cases, usually, you can have actually x-ray clearance and CT clearance. And this is an example of metachronos. And this is a patient of my own, uh, 17 previously operated on a right <coughs> neonectomy, 
And later on, he had the promise here, and he went also, which he was there, on fluorescence from Kostki. And he was treated by that. This is a rare tumor, carcinoid tumor, entirely treated, this one, by PDT. And on that side, you have got the preoperative, a left upper lobe and left main bronchus, and on this side, I think this is 30 years after, but she's coming on for a review uh, every year now, and she's due to come next week. Right. Uh, PDT next step, I think, within multi modal therapy, I think this is one of the most important things we have to consider for lung cancer. <coughs> because 80% are inoperable. And essentially, PDT is a localized, local treatment. PDT for peripheral nodular lesion, we, there are 2% of all cases at the moment with disease. And then targeted PDT, which is target, this is image guided. And I'll come very quickly to that. It's all going over time. Yeah. OK. PDT, yes, as I mentioned, PDT is essentially a local therapy method. Other cancer therapies increase the global effect of treatment. For instance, PDT and chemotherapy, you will get the general effect of chemotherapy and local effect of PDT. And obviously, in the case of the lung, when you consider 80% are inoperable, then many people or those among those in operable would fall within treatable. Because at the moment, many of those 80% really we pay around. Certainly in the uh, central type of tumor, I think, uh, you know, the, the physicians and or the surgeon, nothing else to offer. Uh, they do with the radiotherapy for as much as they can. And chemotherapy, which for a lot of those people is, in my experience, very of time. So, coming to the role of PDT within multi multimodal setting as a neoadjuvant therapy. Now, this is a, really a developing field, and then is an adjuvant to therapy to PDT. And this is again an important because you can have something about 15% of cases that treat us surgery on cutting the bronchus, you would have residual tumor there. And as Colin said, residual tumor means really that you haven't gone to operation. You haven't completely <coughs> treated. So that's important. And in conjunction with chemo radiation or sequential. No, sequential is particularly of my own interest. Just give you a statistic. Essentially, at, as we stand, the monotherapy has been about 700. Most of the cases have been, as you can see, uh, monotherapy. And so far, we have got only about 80% of cases treated with a uh, global therapy, which is really, in my opinion, the future. Our own is, as you can see, is meager, apart from the sequential one, which we have a good series. Sequential one, very interesting, because if they are in the trachea, the tumor is in the trachea, or the main bronchi, it's very difficult to give a, a palliation to the patient. But if you did a YAG laser, evaporate, and then you carry it on with the remaining to a PDT, you get a prolonged for long survival. And there are some people around that we have treated and lasted more than five years on, on this occasion. And you can see that. These are all published, by the way. And you can see these are comparable tumor um, in terms of stage. And when you are treating it, and they had all had a bulky tumor in the main airway, um, when you treat it by uh, sequentially, 
you get a better survival than even when you had a, uh, a good patient with a, with a uh, the WHO is the, the uh, <coughs> performance status. Is it good performance <coughs> status or a bad performance status? With the good one, you get a better survival. So essentially what I'm getting at is that when you have got a bulky tumor, you have to try to uh, debulk. Now, I would want to come in that this is an area that we have been interested on Florence. The phys physician and surgeon in chest have been interested uh, in, in autofluorescence. We have been, and I know that in London they have been in Manchester, or one or two places they are really getting good at it. No, but however, uh, we became involved in, in endoscopic affairs of fluorescence guided bronchoscopy. And let me just show you this. Uh, essentially what it means, it means that if you have got some rogue cells by fluorescence light, which is a different um, different than the light that we use for PDT. It's a blue light instead of red light in the region of 440, 400 to 440, and the PDT light 630. If you do the area which are changes taking place, it shows as a different color. And this is by a good way of localization and going taking biopsies knowing where to get a biopsy, put your needle in, by the way. <laughs> impressed me, obviously. Um, so you can see that is, for instance, on this one. You have put the tumor over in Carina, right on the road, and but you have put a lot of changes taking place in the left side. Now, on this patient, who is, again, a foreign patient, it's not a British one, and uh, it came here, we did it in combination with the surgeon abroad. We carried on PDT and treated the tumor on the left side and the corinal and the right main because they were very early tumor. And then the surgeon carried on the right of the ventury. And this is going to go on for about two years. And this so this is one case of a dawn staging the cases guided by fluorescence in this case. We could do it by fluorescence. Now, we haven't got many cases. I think we have got only about two cases. But essentially, this is really the future. Why fluorescence for automatic gentleman? The middle gentleman there calling fluorescence, I am with you. I'm also with you, but why what prefer fluorescence is that you cannot image the marginal involvement, dysplasia, and carcinoma inside. We can. <laughs> and also, not by, not by paper fluorescence, not, but by enhanced, and in this case, for the chest, is endocyanin green and the infrared light. And that is the future. And to show that it is the future, this is just to say that these are established and these are to be established. But I would want to, um, that, that's, yeah. But what I wanted to say to show that in force of mine, I was involved to uh, get some of my work and review a paper which is a review of all the papers which just published. And I can assure you the future is fluorescence guided surgery. And if we wanted to use you two gentlemen's method as well, then we need that one. <laughs> but essentially for now, just thank you. <laughs>